He's holding a little chub between the twenty four. Oh my god, y'all get ready to do it. It's getting real well. What car we're not gonna know what car he's in either? Not that white. Not in the white. Reports have come out, and we've been covering them, and everybody's been. And I spoke to the parents of an incredible young lady, and you you saw her the other day. You saw what happened the other day in Georgia. And the parents are devastated. They're incredible people. But this is a Joe Biden invasion. This is a Biden invasion over the past three years. I call him Crooked Joe because he's crooked. He's a terrible president, the worst president our country's ever had, uh, probably the most incompetent president we've ever had. But it's uh, allowing thousands and thousands of people to come in from China, Iran, Yemen, the Congo, Syria, and a lot of other nations. Many nations are not very friendly to us. He's transported the entire columns of uh, fighting-aged men. And they're all at a certain age. And you look at them, and they say, they, they look like warriors to me. Something's going on that's bad. Now the United States is being overrun by the Biden migrant crime. It's a new form of uh, vicious violation to our country. It's migrant crime. We call it Biden migrant crime, but that's a little bit long. So we'll just leave it. But every time you hear, hear the term migrant crime, you know where that comes from, allowing thousands and thousands and actually millions and millions of people to come. Could be 15 million, could be 18 million by the time he uh, gets out of office, because hopefully the biggest risk we have is nine months. That's a long time. Right. A lot of bad things can happen. As I always say in speeches and rallies, it's if you take the 10 worst presidents in the history of our country and you added them all up, all of the problems, all of the lousy jobs they've done, you can add them all up. It's not as bad as this one man has done for our country. What he's done to our country is he's destroying our country. Uh, we were just talking before. We were, the general was saying, I can't believe, he can't believe what's happening. You can't believe it. It's so sad. Last year, almost half of all ICE arrests were criminal aliens charged for more than 33,000 assaults, 3,000 robberies, 6,900 burglaries, 7,500 weapons crimes. This is all migrant crime. 4,300 sex crimes, 1,600 kidnappings, and 1,700 homicides and murders. These are the people that are coming into our country. And they're coming from jails, and they're coming from prisons, and they're coming from mental institutions, and they're coming from insane asylums, and they're terrorists. They're being led into our, our country. And uh, it's horrible. It's horrible. And, you know, I know many of the leaders of these other countries that are doing it. And it's not just South America. It's all over the world. The Congo, a very big population coming in from jails from the Congo. You look at the jails now, you take a look at the jails throughout the region, but more importantly, throughout the world. They're emptying out because they're dumping them into the United States. And these guys try and make like, oh, isn't it wonderful? They don't have a clue. I think they're looking for votes. They're looking for something. Nobody's really been able to tell me how anybody could want it. You know, you're always in business. You always want to understand the other side. Uh, you want to figure it out so you can do something that's good or bad, depending on what you're looking for. But nobody can explain to me, because everybody I speak to says how horrible it is. Nobody can explain to me how allowing millions of people from places unknown, from countries unknown, 
who don't speak languages. We have languages coming into our country. We have nobody that even speaks those languages. They're, they're truly foreign languages. Nobody speaks them. And they're pouring into our country, and they're bringing with them tremendous problems, including medical problems. As you know, we had Title II, and we had different things to solve that problem, but they've terminated all of that. Even the judge couldn't believe it. The judge said, no, no, you can't do that. It would be horrible to do that. And he let it go. And But he said, in six months, it expires. And uh, it expired, and that's it. So I just think you're doing an incredible uh, job. Just one week ago, a beautiful 22-year-old nursing student from Georgia was barbarically attacked, almost unrecognizable, while she was out on her morning run. She was a morning run. She was doing a keep herself in shape. She was a beautiful young woman. She was a great person, best nursing student there was. I spoke to her parents yesterday. They're incredible people. They're devastated beyond, beyond belief. But she was beautiful, just so beautiful in so many ways, and brutally assaulted, horrifically beaten, kidnapped, and savagely murdered. The monster that charged, uh, charged in the death is an illegal alien migrant who was led into our country and released into our communities by crooked Joe Biden. He's crooked. I took the name away from Hillary because she's no longer relevant, I guess. She was terrible, but he is, what he is doing is just unbelievable. Joe Biden will never say Lake and Riley's name, but we will say it and we will remember it. We're not going to forget her. It's been just a horrible story that we've had to live with for the last few days. It's hard to believe. And her parents are just, they can never be the same. Great people. Just four days ago, an illegal alien in Louisiana was arrested for brutally raping a 14-year-old girl while holding a knife to her throat. And he then allegedly robbed a man who was getting out of his car in front of his home and repeatedly stabbed him in the face and the back, in the face many, many times, before police found this person standing in the middle of a street, all covered with blood, standing over the blood of the man he was attacking. Last year, a sadistic illegal alien criminal who was released into our country by Joe Biden was arrested for raping an 11-year-old girl and strangling her to death in Pasadena, Texas. And shortly before she was murdered, she texted her father that someone was knocking at the door. He arrived home from work and found his daughter's body stuffed in a laundry basket underneath the bed. Horrible. Crooked Joe is the blood of countless innocent victims. It's so many stories to tell, so many horrible stories. Three years ago, we had the most secure border in history. Brandon was saying it. The general was saying it. We had the most secure border. And people weren't coming because they knew they weren't going to get in. And we weren't promising free education, free medical, free everything. I mean, every, all the promises that are made, no wonder they come. I mean, uh, you look at what this Governor Newscomb from California, isn't that his name, Newscomb? Uh, what he's done to California is unbelievable. People are pouring in. They think they're going to get medical aid. And our soldiers, our vets aren't being taken care of. But people that come into our country illegally are. We ended catch and release. We built 571 miles of border wall, much more than I promised I'd build. And in addition, we purchased another 200 miles. And uh, they sold that, much of it, for five cents on the dollar. And it's the best wall, the same wall that you're using, right. because the governor's now building a lot of wall also. And it works. Walls work. Walls and wheels, I always said. It's one thing never gets obsolete, a wall and a wheel. Everything else is obsolete about two weeks after you come up with it. And we got Mexico to give us 28,000 soldiers to take care of our border. We had the safest border in the history of our country. And now, outside of this area where Texas has done an amazing job, and in a pretty short period of time, they're going to have it all covered. Uh, they have just been incredible. What they, The operation that sh they showed me is nothing less than incredible. And I'll say this, uh, it's a military operation. I mean, we have a military. This is like a war. It's a military operation. So we had remain in Mexico. Remember that? You can't come into our country. And Mexico agreed to it. And I'll tell you someday, I'll tell you why. Safe, safe third agreements. Asylum bans, Title 42, and rapid removals. But Title 42 was so important. Rapid removal so important. But the best was remain in Mexico. You stay in Mexico. We had catch and release in Mexico. We had catch before that. It was catch and release a criminal, and they released him in the United States. 
We had no more catch and release. Our catch and release was we released them in Mexico. And if you broke the law, we caught you, we deported you, or we did something else. But we were doing a great job. And uh, that's where it stood. And then we had an election that uh, we ended up getting many millions of more votes than we did. We did much better in 2020 than we ever even thought about doing in 2016. And very bad things happened. And from that moment on, it was a whole different ball game in Texas and all over. But the governor in Texas picked up the ball, and they've done an incredible job. And I'll tell you, it's an honor to be here. I brought some people here, some executives from New York, because they're, they're marveling at it, too. And uh, you're doing your job. Now we have to find out what's going on on the side, each side, because Arizona's not doing their job. You have a Democrat, liberal, or more than that, governor that probably doesn't want to do anything. So people are just pouring in through Arizona, and they're pouring in through uh, the uh, the beautiful state, the once beautiful state, still beautiful, I guess, but they have a lot of crime and a lot of problems, California, because uh, the governor is not doing his job in California. He's doing a terrible job. He talks a good game. You know, he talks about how wonderful things are, but he's wrong. And they have a big outflow of people, people that pay taxes, people that don't commit crime. They're leaving. A lot of them are leaving. So I just want to thank the governor. I want to thank this incredible group of talent behind me and we just went through a uh, we just went through something very very special uh, we we did a, a tour and we did it through all sorts of cameras they're all over the place I don't know they're in the sky they're in satellites they're on the top of those light poles they're all over the place and you really have it done and I'm very appreciative of it governor you did a great job and you're my friend and it's an honor to have your support and your endorsement and likewise me to you thank you very much great to be here thank you